Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Holmes. Today we're gonna to discuss how something as easy as inflammation can completely change your thyroid function. Now inflammation is probably one of the easiest things to get control of. Why? Because believe it or not, just changing your diet will change the massive amount of inflammation that you might be having in your body. So let's talk a little bit about inflammation first. Inflammation, now a lot of us are very familiar with inflammation. Poor night sleep, we get a little bit of puffy eyes, which is inflammation. If we uh, injure ourselves, we get a swollen joint, when, which is inflammation. When we're sick and we feel really achy, that's inflammation. What a lot of us don't realize is that inflammation is actually caused by your immune system. So we have these things called cytokines, which are immune cells. Now, cytokines can be pro-inflammatory or they can promote anti-inflammatory components. Where we stand in the standard American diet is more in those pro-inflammatory cytokines. How we produce more inflammatory immune cells is by having some sort of diet and lifestyle that's low in omega-3s, high in processed foods, high in fast foods, and low in our great foods like vegetables and fruits, low in grass-fed uh, or uh, free-range uh, animal processed foods, and really, really low, again, in those omega-3s. So before we jump into how cytokines affect this entire process, I wanna talk about how thyroid hormones are made. We're gonna go through this very fast and very brief. If you're interested in more slower detail about how thyroid hormones are made, highly recommend check out our website, check out some of our previous thyroid videos, because we go over this in great detail. So real brief, we start with thyroid hormone production in the brain. So we have this part of our brain called the hippocampus where we release something called TRH, which then talks to your pituitary gland to release TSH. That TSH and the thyroid have this constant communication with each other. So if it senses, if the brain senses we're low on thyroid hormones, we use TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, to go talk to the thyroid where we end up producing our thyroid hormones, T4 and T3. Now, you can see these little numbers or these percentages right here. 93% of your T4 is made in your thyroid, only 7% of your T3. Why is that important? Because the most metabolically active thyroid hormone you have in your body, the one that will give you relief of your hypothyroid symptoms is this T3. Super important, often not measured in blood work. So if you have thyroid hormones uh, measured in your blood, make sure you're getting T3 checked as well. But anyway, since this is our most metabolically active thyroid hormone, we need to actually turn this T4 into T3. And we do this in a few different areas. The number one place we do this is in our, in our liver. About 60% of your T4 is converted into T3 in your liver. 20% is in the gut. It can also become something called reverse T3. So your T4 under high amounts of stress, whether that's chemical stress, emotional stress, or physical stress, our body will convert that T4 into useless reverse T3. And that T3 does nothing for you. Or we can actually convert T4 into T3 in other peripheral tissue other than the liver and the gut. Now this thing right here, T3 uptake, measures how well you can get that T3 into the cell to be activated and used. Because you can have regular old T3, but if it's not getting into the cell, then it's, and it's just floating out in the blood, it's not doing anything for you there either. All right, so back to how inflammation will mess with this cycle here. There is a study that was done on animal subjects where the animals were injected with something called TNF-alpha. That is a pro-inflammatory cytokine. That, caused, that just wreaked havoc on the thyroid for these animals. So what we saw is, a re, is really low amounts of TRH and really low amounts of TSH. So it started to affect brain function. It started to affect the brain's ability to sense when we're low or high on hormones. Now we also saw a huge drop in our free T4, our free T3, and we also saw issues with the liver because what that TNF-alpha did is it messed with an enzyme that's used in the liver to convert our T4 in, into T3. That was just after one injection of TNF-alpha. Now that's just like one day of really big amounts of junk food, like one day where you decided to have 
pizza for breakfast, so pizza for lunch, and then following lunch you had a couple of beers with a brownie and some ice cream. Now that was just one day of junk food that can just cause your thyroid hormones to absolutely tank. Now imagine a lifelong, a lifelong routine of junk food. Now a lot of us think that we're eating really healthy when we're not, for example, uh, eating lots of carbohydrates all the time, like lots of pastas, lots of oatmeal, lots of bread. Those carbohydrates cause a lot of inflammation too. I'm jumping ahead, I wanna talk about another study that actually injected females with cytokines. So we had our control group who had no injection of, of inflammatory cytokines, and then our, um, the other group, the study group, where we injected them with inflammatory cytokines. Now what we saw is a huge amount of reverse T3, because those pro-inflammatory cytokines cause so much chemical stress on the body that instead of making our T3 into a good, useful form of T3, it caused a huge amount of this bad type of T3 that doesn't do anything for us. We also saw a decrease in something called T3 uptake. So the T3, the good T3 that we we're actually able to produce couldn't get into the cell very well. We also saw a decrease in free form of T3 as well as a decrease in TSH after one injection of cytokines. So between the animal subject with one dose of TNF alpha and the women with one dose of pro-inflammatory cytokines, we saw just the thyroid completely crash. Not just the thyroid, but those thyroid hormones and the hormones ability to get into the cells. So what we need to do is live more of an anti-inflammatory lifestyle and we will see huge changes in thyroid function. It can be that easy. Now it might not be the cure-all, but we can at least see massive changes in thyroid function. So what you want to do is start increasing your omega-3s. Omega-3s are found in fish. You want to aim for your smaller fish because those smaller fish have less amounts of mercury in them. And of course, flax has a lot of omega-3 in it too. Increase your vegetables, increase your fruits, and really start focusing on good quality meats and good quality vegetables and fruits. Now, I know processed foods and fast foods, they're just easy, they're super convenient, but I promise you, if you start planning ahead, you, that, will plan, that will give you the route to success when it comes to dietary changes. For example, we do a prep day at home. It's usually on Sunday, we grill a lot of steaks, we'll grill chicken breasts, and we do that all year, all year round. And then we'll either, sometimes we just have salads made, sometimes we'll have steamed, baked, broiled, any uh, for our vegetables. So we've got meal options throughout the entire week. Now I like to switch it up every week or so, so we've got different meals for each week. But when I get home, and I don't get home till pretty late, when we get home at like 8.30 at night, I really don't feel like cooking. So what we've got, we have food prepped and made for us so that when we get home, we have something and it stops us from going out for those fast foods or a lot of those processed foods. Now, it's even in some of those cardiac journals. One of the, the journal cardiac medicine, there's a, one of my favorite quotes, is a cardiologist who is talking about the best way to decrease inflammation is not taking NSAIDs or taking anti-inflammatory drugs. It's changing your diet. Because that's not just anti-inflammatory for right then and there, like a drug. It's anti-inflammatory for the rest of your life. So if inflammation is affecting your thyroid, imagine everything else down the stream that's being affected by inflammation. So if you found this video interesting, please check out our website, ibrainandbody.com, or check out some of our other videos that are on Facebook and YouTube as well. Thanks, and have a great day.